In this video, we'll define the definite integral, one of the most important definitions of calculus. This is a continuation of our Riemann sum discussion. Suppose you want the area under the curve f of x equals x squared on the interval from zero to two. The Riemann sum method is as follows. Take this interval and cut it up into smaller intervals. In each smaller interval, select a point, go up to the curve, and then create a rectangle. Compute the areas of the rectangles and add them together. These areas won't be exact the area under the curve, but there'll be an approximation of it. Let's go over to Desmos and look at some pictures. Here is a Riemann sum. I used a single rectangle and for the point I use to create the rectangle, I selected this left end point two. So I went up to the curve here, and that gave the height of this rectangle. Well, clearly the area of this rectangle and the area I'm looking for, the area under the curve, are very much not to the same thing. Let's try to do better. And let's try to do better by increasing the number of rectangles we use. Here I'm using two rectangles. And the area of these rectangles still doesn't seem like it's a very good approximation of the area under the curve. But it's definitely a better approximation. So here's the first rectangle we had. And you note all this area here. It's in the rectangle. It's being counted. But we don't want it. It's not under the curve. And now that we're using two rectangles, it's gone away. 
let's see what happens if we use four rectangles. So now we're using four rectangles and the area in these four rectangles, this Riemann sum, of course, still not the area under the curve, but it's better. So look at this rectangle we had before. This entire region was being included in the Riemann sum, and we didn't want to be. It wasn't part of the area under the curve. And now that we're using these four rectangles, it isn't being included anymore. Maybe one more example where we'll use um, eight rectangles. Again, the area included in these rectangles isn't quite the area under the curve. We still have stuff that we don't to want, but it's better than our last approximation. And if we used more rectangles, it would be better still. We've seen the idea that we can take limits as things go to infinity. We are now going to float the idea that essentially, if we used an infinite number of rectangles, this approximation would become exact. So we've got this non negative function on an interval we are approximating the area under the curve using Riemann sums. Let's remind ourselves how that works. We have got the interval broken apart. In our Desmos example, all of the little sub intervals had the same length. We won't assume that that's true. We'll call the lengths of these intervals delta x sub one, delta x sub two, delta x sub three. In each interval, we select a point, x sub one star, x sub two star, X sub three star. And what these points are for is to give us the height of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle is then the base times the height. So the area of the first rectangle is f of x sub one star delta x sub one. 
And similarly, the second and third rectangles we can write such a sum compactly using sigma notation So this is a Riemann sum. As the number of rectangles gets bigger and bigger, this Riemann sum should be getting more and more accurate. Or at least that's the idea. It doesn't exactly work out like that, though. Suppose you have these two rectangles, and you decide to make this Riemann sum more accurate by increasing the number of rectangles. You would do so. Now you have three rectangles. You decide to increase the number again. Now you have five rectangles. And if you keep this pattern up, if you just keep splitting the rectangles between zero and one in half, the number of rectangles will go to infinity. But this Riemann sum will never be good. We'll always have this enormous area up here that we don't want. So it's true that the number of rectangles rectangles should be going to infinity, but that's not quite enough. We're going to write the norm of the partition. Norm is a word you'll see again when you get to linear algebra. And it's going to be the longest, or let me say instead, the length of the longest interval in the partition. So up here are three intervals. We've got that, that, and that. And you can see that this interval is the longest. The norm of this partition is the length of this interval. To make our Riemann sum exact, we are going to take the limit as the norm of the partition goes to zero. 
as the norm of the partition goes to zero, the number of rectangles in the Riemann sum will go to infinity. And this is the exact area under the curve on whatever interval we are looking at. And this limit gets its own name and notation. And the name and notation are both familiar. It's the notation of the indefinite integral, except we have a number down here and a number up here. And the name it is called the definite integral. About half of calculus two is going to be spent studying the definite integral, in spite of its rather contorted definition, it is one of the truly major objects of study in calculus.